So we got the um, owner of this block here today, Mr. Twin, <laughs> the Twin STI. We're gonna be doing a little bit of a work on the headlamps, not removing it. Um, you have uh, new ones coming in, right? The headlamps? Yep. So we're just gonna be changing the bulbs. He's gonna be going LEDs as opposed to the ones that he had previously, which um, when it gets hot, the ballast kinda shuts things off. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. It's a Sunday morning, so it looks like it's gonna be nice out. Um, probably in the 70s, which is gonna be ideal. Um, we have a bunch of guys coming in today to uh, meet up so that we can roll in together to a local toy drive uh, meet. Good afternoon guys. So I just threw in some video or some footage of things that's happened this past week. Actually, you know what? Let me just um, get some natural lighting. It is the afternoon, so I'm just gonna pop open the garage. So 
So, yeah, I, like I said, I just decided to just throw in some footage of what happened this past week. There's nothing really, um, in a sense, where I, I, I kind of had it. Um, there's an assemblage of a storyline just uh, because I just didn't have the time to kind of prepare myself. Um, just kind of really been busy this entire week, and I just figured just uh, I'll capture as much as I can. Uh, not much uh, to 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 the footage other than just um, it's all car related. But today, uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working on the um, the measuring of what we're going to need as far as uh, new buckets. So let's um, let's get started. Let me get that uh, covering off of that block um, and go for it. By the way, if you guys are looking for additional Subaru STI Hawkeye content, give my buddy Jacob's channel a shot. Uh, I'll put the uh, link up here. So the uh, first thing we're gonna be doing is we are going to be swapping the stage one cams with the stage three cam uh, packaging that way when these sell uh, they are uh, packaged properly and these by the way have been cleaned uh, polished and inspected by uh, david at the head games motorworks so uh, if anybody's interested let me know so uh, when you open up the box you should get a cam spec card or spec sheet where this is where you will find uh, the valve clearance uh, that you're going to need for both the intake and the exhaust side so we have gone ahead and did the swap so this is now ready for uh, shipping and just kind of wanted to note that uh, your new set of cams on at least on the intake um, will come with four set screws on each intake cam and you're kind of wondering what the heck are these for this is for non uh, abcs uh, 2004 and up sti uh, are um, abcs equipped so uh, we are not going to be needing these just kind of wanted to note that in case you guys were wondering what the heck they were for this lighting probably isn't going to work because it's too bright outside so um unless maybe of course if i move the stand and get behind the light so that's just I guess photography or filmmaking 101 okay next um, I think maybe the best scenario is if I go through a summary and then just go ahead and do it um, so now that we have the cams in place we know that this is the fronts are intake uh, and the cams in the back are exhaust and you will see and see them pretty much labeled. So that's left exhaust. That's of course upside down. Um, and left intake. Same for um, for the other set. Uh, so left being left hand drive driver side, uh, right hand um, being the passenger side. So and these um, caps pretty much go, I mean, it's it's not interchangeable. Uh, as soon as you put them on the head, you'll see the difference. And you will see that, I, it, I believe it's more likely on this side where it doesn't match up, uh, but it does on the other side. So kinda um, already figured, you'll pretty much figure that out uh, as you uh, lay, lay them on and try and match them up. Um, you will see on the end, uh, cam caps that there are arrows you guys can see that and that should be pointing towards the cam shield um, towards the front of the engine so uh, make sure that you have that set right uh, the other thing too is if you're reusing old bolts uh, from your previous motor make sure that uh, it does not have any of the old sealant usually they end up 
being on the ends or some of the uh, or, or some on the, on the threads um, and that will play a role because it's going to uh, not provide you with the exact torque uh, that you will need to make sure that it is to spec so um, let's see what else um, oh let me go over the the sequence so the sequence is going to be uh, when you're tightening it it's going to be uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve I'm not sure if well, I wasn't even looking. I'm not even sure if I got captured that all that. So I'm gonna do it again. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So you can kind of vary it. Uh, in essence, you, as long as you start in on the on the inners and then work your way out, inner out, and then or whether it be either way. So that should uh, be the sequence. Hopefully that didn't confuse you guys. And one other thing too is the, the, the journals. Um, since we are going to be moving it around uh, to adjust where the lobe is so that we can um, find the clearance using the uh, feeler gauge, uh, I want to make sure that these are, these are lubed just so that we're not marring it or, or scratching it. Um, or I mean, you, as long as you really make sure that they're clean, it should be okay. Uh, but I usually would rather have assembly lube on there just in case, uh, just for precaution. Uh, but I don't put it on here yet uh, because that might play into the whole clearance. So, I mean, I don't know. Comment down below what you guys do uh, when you build your motors. Uh, I'm, like I said, I'm not a professional builder. This is just something I do as a hobby. Uh, follow at your own risk. Um, but... Uh, that is the summary so we're just going to go ahead and go through with it and um oh uh, one other thing too before i forget so these are these bolts here one two three four they're seven foot pounds whereas these are 4.8 so um hopefully that made some sense and let's go ahead and do the exercise Okay, so next set of cliff notes uh, or summary is that we are, well, now that the uh, cam caps or, or this cam bracket setup is uh, torqued properly, uh, we can now measure the clearance between the um, cam lobes and the shimless buckets. So, but before we do that, we need to make sure our micrometer uh, is uh, calibrated. So what I would typically do is um, extend this all the way until it's snug and set this uh, micrometer to zero so that when you need to uh, measure these shimless buckets, you can use them. Well, this is a brand new one, so I can use, use this to verify uh, that it, it is indeed accurate by, so this is 4.6. Now, if I were to read this shimless bucket uh, from that center to any a portion of this flat surface it will should register 4.6 so um, that's one of the ways that I would say you can calibrate this uh, this micrometer just uh, because you're gonna need to be able to measure 
existing buckets that you have uh, because in, you know if, you, if you're reusing it because in time uh, this has a tendency to uh, wear a bit and it will no longer uh, be reflecting um, what that value is underneath that shimless bucket so this you know after years of use this might no longer be 4.6 but maybe 4.3 or 4.4 but um, so that's what you need to do uh, and then once uh, you're comfortable with your micrometer and um, that it's adjusted properly, what you need to do at this point is look at your cam sheet or cam card, cam uh, spec sheet, whatever, and your whether you're using Kelford's BC or um, GSC, you should have some sort of documentation that'll tell you what the values you need uh, to go by. So for uh, the stage three Brian Crower uh, that I'm using, it needs eight one thousandths uh, clearance for the intake side and for the exhaust is 10 one thousandths. So then you would gra grab your feeler gauge and um, check the distance between the lobe and the shimless bucket um, by measuring like so. But before you do that, oops, uh, you need to make sure that um, that your lobes are in line with the shimless bucket. So considering that these aren't fully vertical, I'd say, I don't know, um, maybe 15 degrees. Um, basically, you need that center line to line up with the center line of that bucket so that you can get the uh, lowest point and get the accurate um, uh, clearance. Uh, and, and be able to gauge it uh, properly and get the correct value. My recommendation is to jot everything down. Make sure that you um, put on that piece of paper the orientation, um, whether it's intake also uh, or exhaust. That way you're not lost and you got a nice list of what you need uh, to purchase. It, and I think in my case, considering that uh, the intake is all 4.58 on both heads and the exhaust is 4.6. I doubt I'm, I'm going to have um, something like that consistently. Uh, so anyway, uh, being that they're 25 to 30 bucks each, uh, looks like there's going to be another expense uh, for me. Uh, but it is what it is. But let's go ahead and measure this side of the head and see what we come up with as far as values. So I don't know if this is a tip or not, just uh, real quickly, I like to work my way uh, from using a thicker uh, than the specs uh, that it's calling out for, start out thick and then work my way down uh, until I go from um, can't go through, can't go through, uh, snug and then loose. And you know at that point that if it's snug, uh, that's the value that you need to uh, take and and use for your calculation.
Okay, so I got uh, both sides done. I uh, got my values. Unfortunately, it looks like it's all red. Um, <laughs> meaning, out of the 16 buckets, uh, I'm only coming away with reusing, I'm not reusing, actually using the new, they're all new, I should say, but um, I'm only coming away with being able to use two buckets. So I've got a grab 14. So that's about, let's figure, it's about 25 bucks a pop, probably a little more depending on the size. I'm looking at $350 worth of new buckets. So um, it is what it is, but um, it's the price you pay, I guess. So now that I got the values that I need off of the heads, I went ahead and covered it up just so that she stays clean overnight and for however long, because I'm not sure when the new buckets that I am ready to order is going to arrive. So just quickly, I just want to cover the math part of it. Um, and I want to use the left hand side head as an example. So left um, on my, um, which is going to be the front. Uh, to my right will be the rear, and these are the actual physical physical location of the buckets. Uh, the top being the intake side, and the bottom being the exhaust side. So, and these are the values that I, I were to I was able to get uh, as far as clearance between the valve and the uh, between the bucket and the lobe. Uh, the top being uh, in inches, and the bottom in millimeters. So, for the first one is five one thousandths, and the bottom is 0.127 millimeter. Uh, all of these buckets are 4.58 uh, for the intake and for the exhaust is 4.6 so the math uh, oh by the way and the clearances that uh, Brian Crower recommends uh, is well not recommends is saying um, that it should be is uh, 8 one thousandths and 10 one thousandths for the exhaust side all right, let's see if we can translate this into um, something a little bit more clear. Maybe uh, draw some images. Um, so, let me use another pen. So, let's pretend this is the side view of the shimless bucket. This being the top and this being the bottom. And you have this little center piece. Um, and usually in here, uh, is the number on the opposite this is the face so usually on the inside you'll see a number designating the size of this bucket so in our case it is 4.58 because it's a brand new one so I know that the uh, the size is true and so uh, I don't even have to use a micrometer to uh, to measure it but in the case that you are going to be using a used one uh, you need to be able to size that up and to be able to do that is you need to have the micrometer let me go grab the micrometer so you would move the um, or insert the bucket and have it so that this cylinder touches this and this end of it will be on the face so this value that you have that I mean that you'll get is the bucket size sorry for the handwriting but um, put the micrometer back so let's pretend this is the lobe realize it's not in proportion and it's pretty cartoony but that serves the purpose. So uh, you need to also make sure that the angle is, you know, center line, center line matches that of the bucket. So it's probably either 15, or somewhere between 15 and 30 degrees off. But just make sure that the bottom of the, um, of the uh, lobe is in the same center line as a shimless bucket. So now you'll be taking, let's pretend this is the feeler gauge. You'll be putting the feeler gauge between the lobe and the sh and the shimless bucket, and so this right here. I know the gap is really huge, but this distance, this gap between the bottom of that lobe and to the face of that shimless bucket. Let's just use to extend that there. That is going to be your clearance. So in our case of the first bucket, we're going to use that uh, for the left hand head. 
on the driver's side. Okay, I've got a slope. Um, so uh, we're going to be using 0.005 five thousandths of an inch uh, or 0.127 millimeters. And that's usually found in the fueler gauge. So you have two values in there. I don't know if you guys can see it. Oh, backwards. You guys can see it. Uh, let me get one. That's not good. You guys can see it. There you go. The top is the um, inch value, and the bottom is the millimeter. Anyway, so once you have these two values, the bucket size and uh, the clearance, what you're going to do is you're going to add these two. So uh, in our case, we have 4.58. So it's going to be 4.58 plus the 0.127 millimeters um, of clearance. So this is going to be 707. Okay. So now that we, we have that, we are going to be subtracting the desired value. So our desired value uh, is from Brian Crower's uh, timing tag or cam tag. Uh, and it's going to be, we're going to need a millimeter value. Uh, so it's going to be 0 0.203 or 8 one thousandths for the intake side. And that's what we're doing right now uh, is the intake. So we are going to be subtracting point. Two zero three, so we are going to come up with. Um, what, what am I doing here? Um, so it's going to be four point five zero four. Uh, round it off. We're going to be looking for a bucket that is four point five zero, and so that's pretty much it. And we're going to be doing that for every single bucket so it's the same formula but anyway hopefully that helped you guys out uh, if you have any questions uh, sh you know, just comment down below um, and I don't know maybe um, hopefully I get those buckets uh, in soon enough uh, hopefully that's not another case of COVID where everything is all the resources are shot and things are going to take long to arrive uh, I'm already waiting for the uh, intercooler um, set up on on this build and it's been since early may and i'm still getting notifications as of yesterday that it'll still be eight to ten weeks out so um i don't know i don't know if if, if i'm going to be able to get this thing done uh, before fall i was kind of hoping that i would but well it's the way it goes i guess um so hopefully the next uh the next, oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, um, I went ahead and went to the dealership and picked up all the necessary gaskets uh, that I have because I, I had um, uh, had the time. And uh, once I get the buckets, get everything placed back, I can put the valve covers on and I could start working on, for the next session, the um, water pump and the oil pump. So it's coming along. I know it's taken a bit of time and it's been almost two years or over two years uh, and I really can't wait to get her running. Um, I, I, I would really love to get her running. Uh, I'm at a point now where it's, um, I don't want to kind of rush myself, but I'm, I, I'm kind of at a point now where, where I'm so anxious that I'm trying to rush it. But um, w one of the better things is... I guess the whole idea that things are, are kind of taking its time to get here uh, after ordering. So it's probably keeping me humble and keeping me straight and making sure that I do things at a, at a good pace where I'm not rushing to um, and making mistakes. But anyway, guys, I know I'm rambling, but uh, hopefully that uh, kind of helped out. And um, see you guys on the next, the next session. And as always, be kind, stay humble. And if you like this video, hit subscribe and shoot the like. Thanks, guys.